As gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King, on your huskies. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush, with Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Quick as a whip, plenty of snap. Yes, that's the kind of energy Sergeant Preston has. And that's the kind that calls for a good breakfast. So take a tip. Be sure every morning your breakfast includes a heaping bowlful of delicious, nourishing Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice, topped with milk or cream and fruit. Frig Maxwell and Jess Nixon were crouched behind the big boulder near the oil pack trail between Elk Station and Dawson. They held rifles in readiness and grew tense when they heard the distant jangle of bells on a dog team. Frig, you hear that? It's the mail sled. Keep down, Jess. Don't show yourself. Let me look around this side of the rock. It is the mail sled. Frig, I know the sound of the bells. Well, gotta be sure. Wouldn't do to let some traveler get a sight of us here beside the trail. Now just a second, I'll look. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Mail sled. Yep. Get set, Jess. When I give the word, step out and fire. I'm set. Rifle cocked. Now it is. Mine, too. I sure hope there's enough cash in that mail to make this job worthwhile. Yeah, ready now. It's almost here. Give the word. Now. Got him. Now, let's see what's on that sled. Ignoring the dead driver, Trigg and Jess hurriedly opened the mail sack and went through the letters. One after another of these were cast aside. Some unopened, and others that were more bulky ripped open and inspected. It was a disappointing task. Trigg became increasingly angry as it became more obvious that the highwayman had killed a man for nothing. Then he opened a letter that was addressed to Sergeant Preston. The last one. This ain't likely to have anything of value addressed to a Mountie. What's in it, Trigg? Yeah. Well, maybe this is something worthwhile. Could be. It's a claim paper, gold claim. Yeah? Who's sending it? Why is it going to Preston? It's from a gent named Buckman. Seems he found a lost mine. He's sending his papers to the mound. He asked that they be recorded and filed. Well, this describes the location and everything. But what are we... Craig. Yeah? If Preston doesn't get that paper, he can't file a claim. That means that anyone else could file it. Right? <laughs> That's just what I was thinking, Jess. Maybe we can get to be the owners of a gold mine. Bossy Buckman was an elderly prospector who lived with his niece Edna in a cabin on Wolf Creek. They were at breakfast one morning when there was a familiar knock at the kitchen door. Oh, that must be Ted. Oh, of course it's Ted. Who else would come calling at this time of morning? Come on in. Oh, hello, Ted. Sit down and I'll fix a plate for oh, you. Oh, no, 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 thanks, Ed. And I, I saw the light through the window and just stopped in to get warm. Oh, it's no bother. Sit down. Very well, if you insist. But I, uh, I warn you, I'm hungry. Uh, you generally are. <laughs> Don't pay any attention to what Uncle Bossy says, Ted. He doesn't mean it. Yes, I do mean it. I never saw a trapper who wasn't hungry. <laughs> If I don't catch the wolf that's been raiding my trap line, I'll be hungrier than I am now. Now, that excuse for eating my vittles is getting threadbare, young fella. 
Better think up a better one the next time you drop in on it. <laughs> I, uh, I have a better excuse, if you want to hear it. What is it? Why don't you let me marry Edna? Then I'd have a good excuse reading with you all the time. Nothing doing. I won't have Edna marrying a trapper. You're a worthless lot. Here, Ted, a nice hot breakfast oh. for you. Ah, oh, venison steak. And gravy, too. Oh, yeah. It's a steak from that deer you brought us last week. Uncle Bossy forgets about that. <laughs> well, maybe he did bring it, but he'll find it tough chewing. <coughs> well, while you young folks jabber, I'll be getting on with my business. Uh, don't let me run you off, Mr. Buckman. No trapper ever run me anywhere. When I've got business to attend to, don't find me jabbering with females. <laughs> Drop in again, Ted, when you're not hungry. <laughs> Thanks, I will. Uh, by the way, have you found the lost Russian mine yet? Maybe I have and maybe I haven't. You just tend to your trap line, young fella. Well, so long. <laughs> Goodbye, Uncle Bossy. I'll have supper ready when you get home tonight. Bye, Bossy. <laughs> that lost mine is getting to be a touchy subject with your uncle. Yes, it is, Ted. If I were you, I wouldn't tease him about it anymore. <sighs> All right, I won't. Where'd he pick up the yarn about it, anyway? Well, when he was prospecting in Alaska. Now, you hear stories about lost mines in every camp. They're legends, and that's all. Oh, but he read about it in an old book, a diary or something. He won't find it because it doesn't exist. Gold has never been found on Wolf Creek. Well, I'd agree with you, except that... Except what? Well, last week, Uncle Bossy went to Elk Station. He never goes there unless we need supplies. But we didn't need anything last week. And why did he go? He wouldn't tell me. When I asked him, he just grinned. Somehow I got the feeling that it had to do with the lost mine. Oh, someone's at the door. I wonder who it could be. I'll answer it. Morning, Edna. Oh, Sergeant President <laughs> and King, come right in. Thanks. Come on, King. <laughs> Hello, Sergeant. You and King are just in time for breakfast. Hello, Ted. Take off your parka, Sergeant, and sit down. I'll have a plate for you right away. No, thanks, Edna. I had breakfast an hour ago. We get up early, don't we, King? <laughs> oh, please stay for coffee. It's ready to serve. All right. Uh, that must have been your campfire I saw a mile south of here. Couldn't have been mine. I camped three miles east of here. I was covering my trap line when I saw it in the distance. It wasn't mine, Ted. However, I picked up your trail in the snow and followed it here. What? <laughs> the Mounties always get their man, Edna. Shall I surrender without a fight? Why are you trailing, Ted? King and I saw a big timber wolf, one of the biggest I've ever seen, raiding one of your traps. He saw us and ran. Oh, why didn't you shoot him, Sergeant? That wolf has cost me plenty in the well, past I few weeks. I did fire one shot at him, but I only wounded him. How do you know? He left a trace of blood in the snow. I thought you'd like to know, so I followed you here. You bet I want to know about it. I'll go back and pick up his trail. It'd be easier to follow if he's been wounded. Uh, won't you and King come along? No, thanks, Ted. We have to get to Elk Station. Oh, did something happen there, Sergeant? Not there, Edna. But a week ago, the mail sled was held up between Elk Station and Dawson by two men. They killed the driver and ransacked the mail. What did they get from the mail sacks? I don't know. That's why I'm going to Elk Station. The postmaster should know what the sacks contained, and if he does, it may help me find the criminal. Well, here's your coffee, Sergeant. Oh, thanks, Edna. <laughs> if you'll excuse me, Sergeant, I'll go pick up the trail of old Mr. Wolf. Go right ahead, Ted. King and I'll be leaving shortly. S stop by on your way back, and maybe I'll have a wolf pelt to give you as a souvenir. Oh, yes, you must stop, Sergeant. Uncle Bossy will be disappointed if you don't. Then I'll see you tonight, Ted. Bye, right, Sergeant. So long. So long. Meanwhile, Bossy Buckman had followed along Wolf Creek for nearly three miles before he reached a point where the country became more rugged. Soon he turned away from the frozen surface of the little stream and made his way through thick underbrush until he came to a crevice in the bluff. He came to a weather-beaten door made of massive timbers, and he was putting all his strength into swinging it open when he saw two men. Hey! Can you help you, old-timer? I don't need any help. What's the idea of sneaking in here? Don't reach for a gun. It wouldn't be healthy. I'm not armed. Now, what do you want? What do you got there? None of your business. Well, looks like a mine opening, if you ask me. Maybe it is. But you needn't figure on jumping my claim. What's to stop us? I filed papers on it already. It's on record in Dawson. Yeah, you're wrong about that. Oh, no, I'm not. I filed them last week by mail. Now, you better clear out of here. I don't want any trouble with you. <laughs> Are these the papers you're talking about? What's that? Look and see. 
Hey, those are my claim papers. <laughs> and here's the letter you wrote to the Mountie in Dawson right. asking him to file your claim for you. Where'd you get them? <laughs> That's our business. You see, old timer? We can jump your claim, and there's nothing you can do about it. Well, you on receiving critters, I'll no, no. Don't pull any more tricks like that, or I'll put a bullet through. Let you. him up, Jess. We may need him. Come on, get up. You might as well shoot me now and get it over with. We'll decide what to do with you after we look inside the mine. Now lead the way, old timer. I'm not going in there until we brace the timbers at the entrance. Haven't you been inside? Never. I spent last week clearing away boulders. Ah, uh, you're just stalling. Sure he is. He doesn't want us to see what he found in there. Open that door a little wider, Jess. Sure. There. It's open wide enough for us to get in. Plenty dark. We'll have to light a torch. Look through the old timer's gear. Right. You should have a lantern or candle. Here's a miner's lamp. Light it, Trigg. Yeah. As Trigg proceeded to light the small lantern, Bossy Buckman looked hopelessly about him for a means of escape. For he knew it was only a matter of time before he would be killed. Then, a short distance below, he saw something moving along the creek. At first, he thought it was an animal. And then he realized it was a man. He shouted. Help! Help! Shut up! Yelling won't help you any. There's no one around here. Help! Hey, Jess, look. Someone's down there. I see him. Help! Help! Get him, I'm Jess! Help! Now, shut up! Put a sound out of you and I'll cut your throat. Get down low, Jess. The man's heading here through the brush. Shoot him, Trigg. We can't take any chances. Oh, wait. I'll handle him. Keep the old man quiet. I'll get to cover so he don't see me. He will see us. I'll keep you covered. Don't worry. Trigg crept into the heavy underbrush where he could not be seen. A few moments later, trapper Ted Bowen (laughs) broke through the brush. When he saw Buckman in the tight grip of a stranger, he halted and brought up his rifle. What's going on here? The old man's hurt. I'm helping him. He doesn't look that way to me. Get your hands off him. Drop that gun, mister. What? You're covered. Drop it or I'll shoot. That's it. You're smart. All right, Jess. I go the old man's throat. There. You murdering varmints. Ted, they jumped my claim. Now they'll murder both of us. What do we do with that young fellow, Trigg? Shoot him. Oh, not out here we won't. Someone else might be close enough to hear the shot. We take him and the old man inside the mine shaft. Pick up the lantern, Jess. They better walk ahead of us. I'll keep him covered. You carry the lantern. All right. Let's go. Inside, both of you. I'll warn you. Those old timbers are rotten. Shut up and get going. Knowing it meant instant death to disobey, Bossy and Ted walked through the old doorway, followed by their captors. The timbers that supported the walls and ceiling were rotted and weakened by age. Without warning, one of them suddenly gave way. Run, Bossy, run! In the face of the sudden catastrophe, it was a case of every man for himself. The two claim jumpers who had just passed through the doorway wheeled and ran as the mountain seemed to cave in behind them. Run, run! We'll make it yeah. yeah, we made it. That was the closest shave I ever had. Just look back there. Yeah, you can't even see the entrance. Well, the old timer warned us. I didn't believe him. I'd sure hate to be in his shoes right now. Yeah, the other fellas either. They were both right under that timber when it gave away. It saved us the trouble of shooting them. Yeah. Now all we got to do is go file a claim of our own. If the story that he told the Mountie in that letter is true, we got one of the richest mines in the Yukon. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Hey, old timer, you look pretty busy there padding for gold. Uh, well, son, when you're prospecting for gold up here in Yukon, even picket body. But not when you have a heaping bowl full of Quaker puff wheat or Quaker puff rice waiting for you. Well, uh, what kind of vittles is those? Why, haven't you heard? They're the swellest tasting breakfast cereals from here to Whitehorse. They're the famous cereals shot from gun. <laughs> shot from gun? Yep. Quaker puff rice and Quaker puff wheat are actually shot from guns to make them deliciously crisp and tender. They're exploded up, up, up to eight times normal size. That makes them bigger and better tasting. Well, sir, that's a new one on me. Yes, sirree, they're magnified, crispified, shot through and through with bang-up nut-like flavor, too. I guess I'll do a little prospecting on that Quaker puff rice and 
Quaker puffed wheat. Well, believe me, your appetite sure strikes it rich when you pour out a heaping bowlful of those tenderly crisp, melt-in-your-mouth, king-size kernels of wheat or rice shot from guns. Hey, don't I have to cook them or nothing? No cooking, no. Just add milk or cream and top with your favorite fruit. Mighty handy for a busy gold prospector. For any busy person. And mighty nourishing, too. Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice furnish added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. I'm going to get me a sack of them right away. Not a sack, old timer. Quaker popped rice and wheat are never sold in bags or bulk. And that's something for you fellows and girls to remember, too. Always look for the big red and blue boxes with the smiling Quaker man on the front. Then you'll be sure to get the original, crisp, fresh, delicious Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Now to continue. When Sergeant Preston and Yukon King arrived in Elk Station, they went directly to see Steve Oliver, the postmaster who ran the trading post. The Mountie told about the robbery of the mail sled to Dawson, and then asked, Was there any gold or other valuables in the mail sack, Steve? Well, not that I know of, Sergeant. Mostly letters from miners to the folks back home. Could any of the letters have been important to Crooks? Oh, I don't think so. I recollect there was a letter to you. To me? From whom? Why, from Bossy Buckman, who lives with his niece on Wolf Creek. Oh? Huh? I came by his place this morning. He wasn't there, but his niece didn't mention the letter to me. Well, he wrote one. He came in just before the mail sled left for Dawson. Seemed kind of excited. I let him have some paper, and he sat right down there and wrote to him. Didn't tell you what it was about. No, but uh, see, now I think of it, he did ask me for a clean paper. An official form for filing claims? Yep, I keep a bunch of them here. Anyone can fill them out and mail them to Dawson for filing. Then Bossy might have filled out a form and sent it to me. Yeah, he could have, but uh, I don't know if he did or not. Well, I'm to spend the night with him and his niece. I'll ask Bossy about it. Well, you do that, Sergeant. I believe you'll find... Sergeant Preston attached no special significance to the fact that Bossy had sent him a letter or that it might be all important to the solution of the robbery and murder. Short time after he left Elk Station, Trig Maxwell and Jess Nixon, the two claim jumpers, entered Steve Oliver's trading post and asked for an official form for filing a claim. When they had filled it out, Trig said, Now, mister, if you'll sell me an envelope and a stamp, I'll mail this claim paper to Dawson for filing. Yeah, no sense in mailing it. I can save you a lot of time in getting the receipt for you. Oh, how do you mean? Well, I notice your claim's located on Wolf Creek. Uh, yes, sir. What about it? Well, Sergeant Preston of the Mounted Police was in here. He left about an hour ago for Bossy Buckman's cabin on Wolf Creek. He can take your claim paper and write a receipt for you. Save you a couple of weeks. Oh. What's uh, Preston doing up there? Well, the mail sled out of here was robbed a week ago. The driver was killed and the mail ransacked. Uh, Preston was investigating the case. Oh, I see, yeah. You say he's gone to Bossy Buckman's cabin on Wolf Creek? Yeah, he aims to stay there at night. There uh, won't be another mail out of here for weeks, so if you stop at Bossy's place, Sergeant Preston will take care of the papers for you. I guess it would save time, all right. Well, Jess, suppose we go see the morning. Sure, come on. Uh, let's get going. Thanks for the information, mister. Oh, glad to help you out. Come in again when you get your mind off here. All right. Well, Trig, what do you make of that? Uh, just one thing. The Mountie knows something. How much, I don't know, but he's going to start looking for Bossy when he gets there. If he finds the mine, we're sunk. No doubt of that, but how can he find the mine? I don't know. We've got to stop him before he does. First, we'll go back to the mine and hide the gear. It was snowing again, and by the time Sergeant Preston reached Bossy Buckman's cabin, the ground was covered with a new blanket of white. When he entered the cabin, he found Edna terribly upset. I've seen neither of them since they left early this morning, Sergeant. Something must have happened to them. One of them might be late getting here, Edna, but it is odd that neither your uncle nor Ted have arrived. What can we do? Well, how about Bossy's claim? Wouldn't he be there? Claim? He has no claim. The postmaster at Elk Station says he filled out a form. Well, he did go to Elk Station a week ago. 
He wouldn't tell me why he went, but I suspected it had something to do with his search for the lost Russian mine. Well, then if he found the mine, you don't know where it is. No, I don't. And there's just one way to find him. How? The fact that both men have failed to return would seem to indicate that they're together. But Ted went to trail a wolf. Well, that's how we can find them. The snow's covered Ted's tracks by now. But I know where he picked up the wolf's trail. It's a blood trail, and King can follow oh, it. Oh, of course. I didn't think of it. We may be able to find Ted, and perhaps your uncle as well. I'll get my parka, and we'll start at once. Accompanied by Edna, Sergeant Preston returned to the spot where early that morning he had shot and wounded the wolf. King bristled when he caught the scent. Find him, fellow. Find wolf. <coughs> there he goes. He's following the trail. Come on, Edna. We'll have to move fast to keep up with King. In the mind of Yukon King, this was a wolf hunt that would end only when he had run down the sounded beast. He was soon far ahead in the Arctic twilight, with Sergeant Preston and Edna following his tracks in the snow. Meanwhile, inside the lost Russian mine, Ted Bowen and Bossy Buckman had escaped serious injury. They sat beside a small fire they had built of timber fragments. And to think this really is the lost Russian mine. That's right, Ted. But it'll do me no good now, or you either. How do you mean? Well, I had big plans for you and Edna. Yes, sir, great plans. Uh, I don't understand. Well, I knew you and Edna wanted to get married. Well, last week when I located the entrance to the mine, I went to Elk Station. Made out a claim for you and Edna. You mean you wanted us to have the mine? Yeah, I'm getting old. You know, good to me. So I wrote a letter to Sergeant Preston, explained things, told him to file the claim, and bring you and Edna the receipt when he came up this way. Why, my Sergeant Preston came this morning, but he didn't say anything about it. He didn't? Then why did he come up here? He was investigating a robbery. <coughs> hey, hey, what's that? Look, it's a wolf, and we've got no weapons. Not even a knife. <coughs> Watch him, bossy. Get a club, quick. He's a killer. <coughs> Stay close to fire, bossy. He's afraid of fire. That critter's not afraid of anything. <coughs> hey, get away. Get away. Both <coughs> men looked frantically for well, something that could be used are. as a weapon against the infuriated beast, but they found nothing. Their rough boots, they knew, were their only means of defense. Sticking close to the fire, they lashed out with their feet. And then, out of the darkness, suddenly appeared another huge beast. Here's another one, Tim. We're in for it now. That's not a wolf, it's a husky. He jumped the wolf. I know that dog. You do? It's King, it's Preston's dog. Get him, King. Glory be, he's got that critter by the throat. Kill him, King. Kill him. He's got King down. No, he hasn't. King's up again. Come on, King. Meanwhile, Sergeant Preston and Edna had no difficulty following King's newly broken trail in the snow. They followed it along Wolf Creek, and then suddenly the Mountie stopped in his tracks. Edna, look up there to the left. See that light? Oh, yes. I can just make it out. Must be a miner's lantern. Did your uncle have one with him? Oh, yes, he did. Call out. If he's there, he'll answer. All right. Bossy! Oh, no answer. You better investigate. Well, what about King? Oh, he'll find us. Come on. Mounty and Edna pushed through the snow-covered underbrush to the demolished entrance of the lost Russian mine. The lantern cast a flickering glow over the rubble and the mining gear that Bossy Buckman had brought there. This is lantern and gear? Oh, yes. And something's happened here. Looks like a mine entrance. See the timbers? But it caved in. Uncle Bossy may have been caught in Someone's it. Someone's nearby. These fresh footprints in the snow prove that. Oh, well, maybe Tim. Please, Mounty, you're what? <laughs> Sergeant Preston wheeled to see Trigg Maxwell and Jess Nixon appear from the darkness. In Trigg's hand was a rifle, and it was leveled at the Mountie's heart. Trigg Maxwell and Jess Nixon. I hardly expected to find you two here. We figured this light would draw flies. <laughs> now get your hands up. I'll take his gun, Trigg. Keep him covered. You'll never get my gun. Oh, please, Sergeant. They'll kill you if you try to stop them. They'll kill us both if I let them get the gun. Hey! <laughs> Grab him! Grab him, Ted! Trigg Maxwell's bullet Trig. grazed the Mountie's arm. Before Preston could jerk his own gun from his holster, Jess Nixon closed in. <laughs> Don't shoot, Trigg. You'll hit me. Hang on to him, Jess. I'll help you. Trigg Maxwell swung his rifle as a club and caught the Mountie on the head with a glancing blow. Preston went down but kept fighting. He's down. Hold him, Jess. I'll finish him off. Stop! You're killing him! I can't hold him, Trigg. Slug him with a gun. Hey, Jess, look. It's a dog. King! King! It's Preston's dog. No, get back! Let go of me! I'll try to get a shot at him, no, Trigg. Shoot, you'll hit me. Grab him. Get him, King. As King's sharp fangs gripped Trigg's gun arm, piercing the heavy parka sleeve, Sergeant Preston scrambled to his feet, his gun in his hand. Not that rifle. Call off this dog. Get him away from me. Get your hands up. You'll never get me if I can get free of this dog. Not so fast, you. Let me go. Get on. Hold on. Good.
Edward Ted, Don King, Don Boy, all I choose to... In a matter of seconds, Trig Maxwell and Jess Nixon were prisoners. While Sergeant Preston searched them, Ted and Bossy told how King had killed the wolf and then led them through a crevice out of the mine. Never find our way out if it hadn't been for King. He trailed the wolf in there. Until he showed up, Bossy and I thought we were in there for life. Bossy, look here. That's it. That's the letter I wrote you. I never got it. I found it in Maxwell's pocket. In Maxwell? Maxwell, I arrest you and Jess Nixon in the name of the Queen for the murder of the mail sled driver. Murder? You mean these two are killers? This letter was on the sled that was robbed and the driver killed. They learned you'd discovered the lost Russian mine. They came here. You know what happened this morning? Oh, we sure do. They thought they'd buried us for keeps. Then they went to Elk Station and made out a claim paper naming themselves as the discoverers of the mine. Here's the form they filled in. Why, the dirty... Oh, but thanks to King and a wounded wolf, they didn't get away with it. Ted, you promised me a wolf hide for a souvenir. <laughs> and I've got it, Sergeant. It's right back there in the mine. <laughs> then, King, old boy, this case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's adventure. Quaker pop wheat and Quaker pop rice are never sold in bags or bulk. As Mother knows, quality comes first in a food. That's why the famous breakfast cereals, Quaker pop wheat and Quaker pop rice, are made from only the premium grains of wheat or rice. And they rate high in nourishment, too. Every delicious spoonful gives you added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. To get the original, the crisp, fresh, nourishing wheat or rice shot from guns, always buy the big red and blue Quaker packages. The packages with the smiling Quaker man on the front. Get the one and only delicious Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puff rice, never sold in bags or bulk. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of restitution. Jim Bledsoe was president of the Seattle Bank. When it was closed by an unexpected run, he disappeared. And one day I got a letter that sent King and me looking for him. Before we found him, we encountered two criminals who were out to get both Bledsoe and me. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Wednesday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns. Your best bet for hot breakfast is Quaker Oats, the giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, if you want to be a star in sports and school activities, make your hot cereal Quaker Oats, because Quaker Oats helps grow the stars of the future. You get more growth, more endurance from oatmeal than from any other whole grain cereal. Remember, Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs>